What up crew, it is Magic Monday and I have a great quote for you today. This one's by Theodore Roosevelt. It says, it is hard to fail, but it's worse never to have tried to succeed. Just think about that. And now I have this trick to show you that'll only work at certain times. So let's do it. All right guys, so check this out. I got my deck of cards right here. Of course, crucial for most card tricks. Gonna start off by giving the deck a quick shuffle. There we go, that should be good enough. And just one cut like that. Now I'm gonna have a few cards uh, picked out at random by spectator. Let's just, um, there we go, that should be good enough. Now we're gonna take all these cards and uh, have a spectator shuffle these up. There we go. And now, again, this is just to randomize this even more. The spectator is not gonna pick one of these cards and that's gonna be their selected card. Let's say that one, you know what? We're gonna change our mind. We're gonna go with this one instead. All right, take a look and remember that card. Hopefully you got that memorized by now. Gonna take that card, leave it over to the side, and I wanna have the deck split into two piles. So let's just speed through that. All right, there we go. Now the spectator can take their selected card and put it on top of either pile. Let's just say uh, this one right here. And now they're gonna take these uh, packet of cards. They can put that on either pile as well. Uh, let's just say here again. And we're gonna put that, sandwich that in the center. Now, of course, I have no idea where the card is in the deck. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. Do you actually know what time it is? Uh, I have a clock a watch right here. It says 4.25. So just so you can see that, it says 4.25. I have no idea how clear it is on camera. It says 4.25. Now, um, four plus 25 is 29, right? So let's actually count down to the 29th position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, and twenty-nine. If we take a look at the twenty-ninth card, we'll see that it's your selected card, the King of Diamonds. All right, guys, welcome to the tutorial. Just a little bit of background on this effect. It's known as Hourglass Cards by Jordan. And of course, the reason why it's called that, as you've seen in the performance, is because the spectator's card is located based on the current time. Breaking this trick down, of course, it's completely impromptu, but you will need 52 cards to actually make it happen. So the way it's taught by Jordan is uh, he has a spectator go ahead and select out six cards. Now, the way that I like to have the six card selection is not to tell the spectator explicitly to pick out six cards, but just have them pick out cards at random until I tell them to stop. So here we have the six cards and then the spectator can shuffle them up and then pick one of these six cards to uh, take a look at and remember. And of course, the uh, reason I tell them I'm doing this is because I wanna randomize this as much as possible. So the spectator, the card they selected was the seven of diamonds. From this point, I like to go ahead, have the spectator split the deck into two piles. And the reason I have the spectator do this is because we want as much uh, engagement with them as possible. Once that's done, the spectator can take their selected card and put it on top of either of the two piles. Let's just say this one. And then they could take the rest of these cards and put that on top of either of the piles as well. And honestly, it really doesn't matter because ultimately these cards are gonna be merged, whether it's here or here, they're all gonna go on top of the spectator selected card. So let's say the spectator puts it here. We take that, put it on top of the spectator's card. And now that card is sandwiched in the middle. Now, of course, the key element that's used in this trick to locate the spectator's card is the current time. Now, the card is in the uh, 29th position with the way that we have it set up. So the only times that this would work is at uh, 128, 227, 326, 425, 623, 722, 821, 920, 1019, 11, 18, and 12, 17. Man, that was a mouthful. The reasoning for this is because we had the spectator select six cards in the beginning. So the card ended up in the 29th position. Now, for example, if the spectator selected five cards instead, the card would then be in the 28th position. So instead of the uh, time I said in my performance, 425, which is for the card in the 29th position, I would have said something like uh, 424 or 325. So depending on how many cards you have the spectator select in the beginning, you can always change around the uh, time that you are doing the trick. So. Of course, depending on what time you're doing the trick, that's how many cards you'd have the spectator select. And of course, it's really powerful, especially um, since nowadays everyone has a cell phone. It's really powerful to have the spectator go ahead, take out their cell phone, look at the time, 
add everything up themselves and then be able to count down that many cards and have the card at that selected position. That just adds so much more impact to this whole effect. Just to wrap it all up now, the spectator tells you the time is 425. You add four plus 25, you get 29. Have the spectator count down 29 cards. One, two, 29. And the seven of diamonds will be in the 29th position. So I know the timing is gonna be really key for uh, this card trick, but I'm telling you the reactions that you'll get due to your perfect timing will just blow people away. Now for more cool stuff, check out this video right here and I'll see you there. Peace out.